Welcome to XCD for another ministry message. Today, we're going to continue our series in the hard truths of the Bible, tackling the topic of homosexuality. Today, we'll answer the divisive question, does God hate homosexuals? We'll explore what the Bible says about homosexuals and clarify some of the misinformation surrounding Christianity and this topic. As always, before we begin, let's first pray in order to invite the Holy Spirit's guidance as we look at this hard truth of the Bible. Jesus, thank you. We can ask you anything, even about the most difficult topics of our day. Holy Spirit, reveal the Father's heart that openly shares his love to sinners that we may know you better. Give us understanding about the subject of homosexuality and how we can best share your love with everyone. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. As we begin, let me first set some parameters for our exploration. We're not going to address the subject of nature versus nurture, meaning are people born as a homosexual or do they become that way from the influences around them as they grow? This is an often asked question, but one that I believe falls under the definition of a detail about homosexuality. Whereas today, I'd like us to look at this topic from a more broad view. Before we look at what's not allowed, let's first look at God's plan. He established marriage between a man and a woman and within marriage, the physical act of making love is blessed. As the old saying goes, God created Adam and Eve, not Adam and Steve. Genesis chapter 2, verse 24 directs, Therefore a man shall leave his father and his mother, and hold fast to his wife, and they shall become one flesh. God didn't say it was impossible for people to have sex in other ways. He just stated that the way he created sex to be blessed was between a man and a woman within the bond of matrimony. There is no hate ascribed to those from God if they choose sex in another manner. Likewise, in Leviticus 18, 22, where God says, do not have sexual relations with a man as one does with a woman, that is detestable. God is not making a broad statement directed to those who decide not to follow God's plan for sexual relations. God is specifically talking to the Israelites, his people, who he wants to live differently than the other nations around them, who practiced different ways of having sex along with worshiping other gods. Likewise, in the New Testament, we read in 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verses 9 and 10, or do you not know that wrongdoers will not inherit the kingdom of God? Do not be deceived. Neither the sexually immoral, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor men who have sex with men, nor thieves, nor the greedy, nor drunkards, nor slanderers, nor swindlers will inherit the kingdom of God. The Apostle Paul clarifies God's heart to Christians. He's not preaching to those who don't subscribe to the precepts of God. Paul is pointing out that we should be careful of saying we are followers of Jesus and then live in a way that is not in keeping with Christ's ways. Having sex different from the way God described in Genesis is only one on a long list of ways people could deceive themselves by living contrary to the life they say they are following as a believer. In the big picture, this is no more a bash against homosexuality than it is berating people who steal or get drunk. God's message is simply be authentic. If you claim to be my people, then live in such a way that bears witness to this reality. In Philippians chapter 1, verse 27, Paul challenges, only let your manner of life be worthy of the gospel of Christ, so that whether I come and see you or am absent, I may hear of you 
that you are standing firm in one spirit, with one mind, striving side by side for the faith of the gospel. Unfortunately, these same scriptures are often used by people who say God hates homosexuals. This is biblically untrue. Scripturally, along with sin, there are seven things that God hates, found in Proverbs 6, 16 through 19. There are six things that the Lord hates, seven that are an abomination to Him. Haughty eyes, a lying tongue, and the hands that shed innocent blood, a heart that devising, devises wicked plans, feet that make haste to run to evil, a false witness who breathes out lies, and one who sows discord among brothers. Notice there is no mention here at all of homosexuality. Why then is homosexuality such a heated and controversial subject? Once again, we need to look at this from a bigger picture perspective. Ever since sin entered this world, there has been enmity between God and the devil. In Genesis chapter 3, verses 14 and 15, the Lord God said to the serpent, Because you have done this, cursed are you above all livestock and above all beasts of the field. On your belly you shall go, and dust you shall eat all the days of your life. I will put enmity between you and the woman, and between your offspring and her offspring. He shall bruise your head, and you shall bruise his heel. This is the root source of the divisiveness on this and every other topic. Satan has simply taken this matter and made it personal. Yet we know from Scripture we don't fight against flesh and blood. Ephesians chapter 6 verse 12 clarifies, For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the cosmic powers over this present darkness, against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places. People that stir up controversy around this subject act as pawns of the enemy. Romans chapter 16 verse 17 warns, I appeal to you brothers to watch out for those who cause divisions and create obstacles contrary to the doctrine that you have been taught. Avoid them. People who don't know or follow Christ have no other option because their hearts are enslaved by the world and the things in it. We who are no longer of the world should no longer live according to it. Romans 6, 18 extols, and having been set free from sin, have become slaves of righteousness. This is our condition in Christ. Sadly, some who claim to be Christians speak in a way that Christ would never when they tell unbelievers that God hates homosexuals. Homosexuals are sinners like you and me, and Christ died for all sinners. 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 18 proclaims, For Christ also suffered once for the sins, the righteous for the unrighteous, that he might bring us to God, being put to death in the flesh, but made alive in the Spirit. No one would die for someone they hate, but the devil spreads this lie to sow dissension and discourage sinners from believing and receiving Christ's love unto salvation. This is the battle we as believers must wage against the powers of darkness. We must answer hate with love, as it says in Matthew 6, 35. But love your enemies and do good and lend, expect, expecting nothing in return, and your reward will be great, and you will be sons of the Most High, for He is kind to the ungrateful and the evil. When others want to argue with us about our stance on gay marriage, we are not to engage them, but simply kindly exit the conversation. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verses 23 through 25 instructs, have nothing to do with foolish, ignorant controversies. 
you know that they breed quarrels. And the Lord's servant must not be quarrelsome, but be kind to everyone, able to teach, patiently enduring evil, correcting his opponents with gentleness. God may perhaps grant them repentance, leading to a knowledge of the truth. In all things, we are to reflect Christ's love. Taking advantage of any opportunity to share the gospel with those amenable to hear. In conclusion, God does not hate homosexuals. God hates sin and warns those that claim to be his followers that they need to live in accordance with his word. Along with many statutes in the Bible that a believer should follow is the one defining sex as a union blessed only in the marriage relationship between a man and a woman. Those that practice other forms of sexual relationships are not vilified or demonized any more than those who are greedy, slanderers, or idolaters. And the passages in the Bible about such were never aimed at unbelievers, but at those that claimed to follow God, but lived a contrary existence. The only thing Christians need to say to homosexuals or anyone else that does not know Christ is, Jesus loves you, died for you, and longs for you to be reconciled to God. 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 9 sums it up nicely. The Lord is not slow to fulfill his promise, as some count slowness, but is patient toward you, not wishing that any should perish, but that all should reach repentance. Let's pray. Father, teach us to be wise and discerning of all the devil's schemes. Let us not get caught up in senseless arguments, but instead harvest every opportunity to share your love with sinners who so desperately need salvation. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Thank you for watching this XCD ministry message. And may the blessings of God be yours in abundance.